yet like no other. Even when pages fly without lifting a finger. Because this is the new Kindle Voyage, passionately crafted for readers. Sembra quasi di essere in un altro mondo, dove per muoversi non c'è bisogno di strade. E vorresti che tutto questo non finisse mai. Solo con Team Special i tuoi minuti non scadono. Quelli che non consumi li usi nei mesi successivi. In più hai musica, film, giochi e la serie a Team inclusi per tre mesi. Divertiti senza consumare giga. Let me tell you a story about a book that keeps getting better. Born from a love of reading, raised to be read in brilliant light or dark of night, and smart enough to know the difference. Its power can last for weeks, not days. Revealing brilliant words, but never glare. It is thousands of books, yet like no other, even when pages fly without lifting a finger. Because this is the new Kindle Voyage, passionately crafted for readers. Hi everyone, ciao. Sorry for the four minutes delay. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, just to introduce ourselves, uh, I'm Livia Iacolare. I'm uh, the media partnership manager for Twitter Italy. And this is Jerome Tomasini, he's going to introduce himself. Uh, I'm the news uh, partnership manager in Twitter France. Yeah. So we're going to do a one hour masterclass. We did one previously, the last two hours. Some of you might be survivors from the previous masterclass, so just uh, I, I, I hear some people laughing. Yeah, that's true. So we are going to um, to teach you and possibly in some teach you if you don't really, don't really know a few things how to use properly Twitter and all its tools in order to to do your work better. And if you are students, how to you know learn how to do it when for when you will be professional journalists. So I hand it over to Jerome, who will start the presentation. So. Uh, I want to show you uh, if it can be shown. Yeah, uh, two pictures just to highlight uh, the change uh, we uh, we lived the past few years. So this picture was uh, taken uh, ten years ago on um, Saint Peter's Square during the election of Pope Benedict XVI. So you can see uh, the people are gathered to um, uh, to have the, the news of the election, which Pope uh, will be elected, uh, which Cardinal will be elected Pope. And you, s you can see there is only one small phone, a feature phone on the bottom right. <laughs> Eight years after that, same place, same events, we have this. So what's interesting in this picture is all these people have an HD camera, they have an internet connection, and they can share it via Twitter. Twitter was invented in 2006. So this changed everything, especially for journalists, because everybody can become a source of information. And you can tap, you can tap into that source to have a point of view that wasn't possible before. So a few characteristics about Twitter, which makes Twitter unique. Uh, Twitter is real time. This is uh, pictures from uh, historical events uh, which were told by journalists only. And now when you have the Hudson, uh, the, uh, the plan in the Hudson, the Arab Spring, or um, a fire in the Muse Maison de la Radio in Paris, you have the people living the events who are um, telling how they happen in real time. 
This is uh, during the Charlie Hebdo attack uh, in early uh, January this year. The first tweet sent about the, the, the attack was sent by um, a TV station, a news TV station called Italy. Uh, but when you go on on the, on the timeline, you, you can see that three minutes after that, some Parisian uh, tweeted about gunshot he heard uh, in the vicinity of uh, his, uh, his home. And he was not aware at the time that it was Charlie Hebdo or, it, if, or, or the tweet about Italy, he just heard gunshots and he tweeted about that. As you can see, he's not a journalist. A second example, a few minutes after that, we see a, a Parisian as well uh, tweeting a photo of a crime scene during which a police, a police officer was shot. And as you can see, he is not a journalist. Ten minutes after that, another bystander just tweeted a, a photo of outside the office of Charlie Hebdo. And a, pr a, a person asked him if he's on scene and if he's the author of the photo, and he's, he's, he replied, yes, you can use the photo. He is not a journalist. Only five minutes after that comes the first uh, journalist. Uh, one, of, one, of them, one of them uh, was from Le Monde, and when he tweets more or less the same picture, he has a lot of engagement because he's a journalist, because uh, he's trusted, and because the, the picture is also very dramatic. A few minutes after that, Le Monde creates a list of people worth following to be in touch with the events at Charlie Hebdo. And as you can see on the list, there is people from Le Monde, so their own journalists, but also journalists from other news organizations and even people that are not journalists. The second dimension of Twitter, Twitter is conversational. So you can have direct conversation with people famous and with people not famous and uh, interact with them. So this is an example. The Je suis Charlie, the, the famous motto, was tweeted first uh, by um, some Parisian. Uh, he, he just put, it the, put the, 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 the visual, the image. This tweet has no text, no hashtag, no whatsoever, just the image. And this spread like wildfire. A uh, few minutes after that, someone asked him uh, if he was able to use it uh, free of charge, and he replied, yes, and you must. And that's how this visual became, uh, became uh, uh, shown everywhere. So you have uh, a, a press, uh, a news organization, you have a soccer club, you have international uh, news organization using it, and as uh, we can see as well, uh, there is another slide. Um, a third dimension of Twitter is public and widely distributed. So when you tweet, your tweets can escape out of Twitter. And someone, even if this someone is not on Twitter, can see your tweet because it will be, it can be embedded on a website. So this is the, uh, uh, a drawing from Plantu. Uh, he wants to pay his respect to his uh, fellow uh, colleagues uh, who were murdered, so he tweets. This tweet got 32,000 retweets. It was shown and and, and, uh, and seen on Twitter 2.3 million times. But what's more interesting is that outside of Twitter, newsrooms took the tweet and embedded the tweet. Not a screenshot, but an embed. They put the code inside the web page. And almost 70 newsrooms did that. And the tweet was seen 22 million times outside Twitter. So 10 times more than on Twitter. And people who are not and probably won't ever be on Twitter have seen this tweet. And this is an extract from a, a, a TV broadcast where you can see all the, the tweets uh, used during, uh, uh, as to, pay, to pay respect everywhere in the world. On, on the, on the built, uh, um, building, in maternity, etc., etc. All these were tweets just snapped by people from all over the world. And Twitter is global. Uh, as you can see for uh, Je suis Charlie, the tweets started in Europe, in France, and as time progressed, all the world was uh, tweeting about uh, this uh, uh, situation and these events. This is a, a great example of how a conversation becomes global, also thanks to Twitter. 
So a few, a few figures about the Twitter usage. Uh, we have 288 million monthly active users. So this is, acti this is user who have an account and connects to it at least once a month. But as I said, Twitter is much, the Twitter power is go much beyond that since there is 500 million unique logged out users on Twitter. So you can, log you can go to twitter.com without, uh, without having an account and be exposed to tweets. Uh, s more than three quarters of our users are outside the US, 80% access Twitter via mobile, and uh, there are uh, half a billion tweets sent per day. So uh, now let's, let's see how you can leverage Twitter. There is four dimensions that you can really uh, use. You can use Twitter to detect the news, you can use Twitter to report it, to distribute it, and to engage your audience. So the first and maybe the most important is to detect. Twitter is a good way to find the news before it finds you. So three, three, uh, three ways to do that. The basic, most basic way, but the most effective is optimize the people you follow. Second is create list and then search effectively. Know how to search to save time. So optimize your following. You have to be really strategic about who you follow. So. For example, follow everyone, every, uh, your sources. Follow the people you are in contact with. If you are um, a fashion journalist, if you are a sports journalist, if you are an economic journalist, ask yourself who are the people, who are the institutions that are worth following because I can gain uh, insights about what they are doing. So follow them. Then follow your colleague. Follow also your uh, foreign uh, counterparts, especially if if they are more mature in their usage, you will learn from experience uh, from their example. So go check French uh, journalists, English journalists, Italian journalists, American journalists, and uh, follow them. And then be aware, all of the people uh, you follow, it's, it's public. So everybody can see who you follow and maybe check that you follow a very weird account and tweet you about that. So make sure uh, you completely own the fact that you follow these accounts. Uh, this is a, an example of uh, a website built by um, a developer about the, tweet, the, the accounts that are most uh, commonly followed by the staff of the New York Times. As you can see, in the top five of these accounts, uh, the first is obviously the New York Times, but the New York, staff, the New York Times staff also follow uh, the, um, the, the executive director of Meshable and also the founder of uh, f f 538. So it's a great example to go outside also your own uh, news organization. How you can find uh, people on, on Twitter and especially journalists. So uh, for example, you type AP in the search field, you click at the, at the very end of the search field on the icon uh, that create the, the advanced uh, panel. You click on people and then instead of having tweets, you have accounts relevant to the search that you made. And then you can follow, for example, journalists from the AP. You can also use a third-party website called Follower Wonk that enables you to search through Twitter bios. So for example, if I want to search for Corriere della Sera, so people with Corriere della Sera in their bio, I can do that and then uh, Follower Wonk uh, order them by number of followers. So it's also a good way to uh, spot great accounts to follow. And then create list. So Invest time in creating lists, especially if it's a list of people that you will um, go on and on. For example, create a list of the um, uh, writers, the best writers on Twitter, or the, the economic director, or the politician, etc., etc. Especially if there is a news event and you want to know if they have tweeted about that, you can just scroll your list and see if uh, they have a reaction. So if you have built them in advance, you will save time. So for, to create a, create a list is also a way to monitor account without uh, necessarily following all these accounts. I created a list of the French uh, 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 member of the European Parliament. There are 70 of them. I don't want to follow all of them, but I want to know from time to time what they are tweeting about. So I created this list, and from time to time I go see what's, uh, what, what they are tweeting. So it's a good way uh, to, to monitor them. Also, uh, create a list is also uh, a good way to um, show your expertise and uh, to, to do that, you can go to your profile on the, on the mobile app, you 
click on the wheel, you click on list, and then you click on the plus button and you can create a list. This list can be set to private. If you set a list to private, it's only known by you. Uh, and um, it's also maybe a, a good way to just not um, warn the people that have been put in the list, that they are in the list. So for example, if, you, if we return to the li the, my list, you can see that the one without the lock are public and the one with the lock is private. So only I can see normally this uh, selection of list. Uh, so create a public list is also a good way to show your expertise. So uh, this is a journalist from BFM, he's a political journalist. I go to his profile, I click on the wheel, I click on list, and I see that he has built some list, and I can exploit this list to find great accounts. Uh, I use his curation to find content. And also, it proves to me that he is a good journalist because he knows who needs to be followed. Uh, as, a, as a media organization, you can also create lists about your journalists. This is the very basic, basic stuff, but you can also create lists of your journalists attending a particular event. So this is a list of the journalists who were tweeting about the Copenhagen, uh, Copenhagen uh, attacks a few months ago. Uh, when you put someone in a public list, they receive a notification that you have put them in the list. So it's also a good way to grab your attention and maybe to make them follow you. So uh, this is a, a great trick. And then to add someone to a list uh, we, uh, from the mobile, you go to the profile page of the person, you click on the wheel, you click to add to the list, and it's done. When you have created uh, your list, you can go to twitter.com slash settings slash widgets and um, have the, Twitter, the, the code that you can put on your web page to embed the tweets from the people uh, inside the list. And then TweetDeck. Yeah. How many of you use TweetDeck or know what it is about? Yeah, come on. It's a few people. So uh, TweetDeck, uh, for those who don't know it, it's a, it's a platform that Twitter acquired a few years ago. And uh, it's something that we really recommend and encourage journalists and editorial teams to use. Uh, why? Because it has a few um, characteristics that will really, really make your job easy. Uh, let's say, for example, this is, oh, this is the, the magic button add column. Uh, when you, once you enter in, in TweetDeck in this magical world, you can create basically, you can monitor basically any conversation in the world happening on Twitter. There are a few uh, things you can do. You can create a, a, a filter that shows you uh, the, fav um, I mean the, favor the, the tweets that someone has faved. Um, just to say, for example, I want to, I'm following a public account and I want to see which tweets he faves. That's a good way to do it. You can create a filter for that. Or you can follow, uh, you can create a list of users to follow and, and see all their tweets in the column. So what he has been explaining to you uh, a few minute, uh, minutes ago, you can do it on TweetDeck and it's actually easier to do. Uh, you can create a search filter so you can search for hashtags and or specific keywords you, are, you want to monitor. And then you, you can see you know, their, them, the, the tweets populating this search filter in real time. Also, you can decide to create a column that only shows you the tweets from a specific user. So I want to make sure I, I never miss uh, tweets from Jerome or from the president of the French Republic. I can create a list just for that. Or you can create also a collection of, of tweets. So there is a, basically another, a new column that appears and you can drag tweets into that column and create a collection of tweets that you can then embed on a website. But let's see the dashboard first. I mean, the dashboard, uh, now it's black. You can also change the color to white if you want it. Uh, you see there are three, four different uh, filters here. One is a, a filter that tracks a list, the list you've seen before, all the tweets from the ministers of the government balls. Uh, then you see another search uh, filter for a user. So you, there you will see only the tweets uh, sent by Twitter France. Then another list that monitors all the tweets that are about the Euro 2016 event. And then a list for the voice. So just to track the conversation around a, a show, a TV show. How do we create a list on TweetDeck? So very easy process. You click on the magic button I mentioned before, add column and a pop-up window will appear. Uh, you select lists, and then you can uh, create a new list by clicking on that button, the blue button. And from there, you can decide if you want to make it public or private. 
just as uh, Jerome showed you before. And then you start searching for the accounts you want to monitor and add to this list. So in this case, uh, we searched Mond because we wanted to look for mm, Le Monde, the account. And then it popped up because uh, you know it's uh, it's a keyword. So and uh, and we add you can add it to the list. When when it's done, we click on done, of course, and we have a list. Beautiful. Uh, how can we search effectively? Many people use Twitter in a very basic way. They just put a keyword in the search box and that's it. Actually, you can add specific filters to, to searches so that, you know, uh, and, and if you use these this search operators that are universal and they can also be Boolean operators, so and, not, or, for example, if you're familiar with this language, um, they will really allow you to, to get to very specific content. Let me show you something. For example, we could create a list, uh, a filter, sorry, on TweetDeck that only shows us the tweets that have the hashtag IJF15, uh, add the word filter, two point, uh, and then uh, images, and, and see only the tweets that are about uh, the journalism festival, which contain an image sent by Jerome. So we can create a filter that is so specific and accurate. This is an example. We have a filter here for Je suis Charlie, and there are many tweets appearing on the screen. How can we filter out the clutter and just see the relevant tweets that we want to see? Very, very easy. Uh, we have to select on the, um, the top, the click on the top right button, uh, which is the settings of the filter, and then you will see uh, different options. Uh, the first one is content. So when we click on content, we can ask TweetDeck to show us all tweets or only tweets with images, tweets with videos, with vines, with any media or with links that contain the hashtag Je suis Charlie, for example. Uh, so in the, matching uh, in the matching box, you just input the hashtag you were searching for. We can also exclude words if we don't want to have tweets that are contain specific words. We can choose also to see only tweets that have those characteristics and are being sent in a specific language. So I want to see only the tweets in Chinese. We can do that. And we, we, may, we may want to exclude retweets because they you know, tend to uh, be too many sometimes in the timeline and it makes it very hard to follow a conversation. So we can exclude uh, retweets if we want to. Then we click on uh, users and there is another uh, menu showing up. We can say, I want to see all the tweets with the hashtag Je suis Charlie in English uh, sent by verified users or sent by uh, a list members of a list that I have created or a mem or a specific users it's really really sp you know, as detailed as, a, as it can get and uh, of course you can add the list from the menu because if you have created it already it will be showing up then there is another very powerful filter which will save you a lot of time it's the engagement filter. Uh, basically, here we can ask uh, TweetDeck to only show us the tweets that match all the previous uh, keywords and settings, but uh, have uh, at least a certain number of retweets or faves or replies. So this way we will only see the most popular tweets about that specific topic. And this will save us a lot of time if we need to write a report. And of course we can... It's like a public microphone, so use your tool and use your audience. Use it also to maybe thank the people who are reading your articles or watching your show. It's always great to have this kind of connection. Uh, and uh, use it also to break news about yourself. If you're moving into a new newsroom, if you have a new show, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, let the world know. Uh, also share breaking news as breaking news as maybe the death of a public figure. You can put it just by text, no hashtag, no links. Uh, but because she is a journalist from the New York Times, it's taken seriously and the people are using her tweets to share the news. Uh, you can also put maybe a username if you want to promote your media, or you can put a link if you want to drive traffic to your website. So either way, uh, you can uh, break news. And you can also recommend articles worth reading. The goal of Twitter is to be ambitious. It's a public platform. It can help you stand out of the crowd and become the best journalist in your field. And maybe be invited on TV shows, uh, secure book deals, etc., etc. You have a tool to become someone widely known thanks to your work. So use it and have 
uh, as a goal to become the most um, uh, ref uh, the, the most famous journalist because the, the best journalist in in our, our field. Uh, this is also a way to share articles. Uh, even article from the competition. Don't be afraid to share good content, yeah, even if it doesn't come from your own newsroom. Uh, the idea behind that uh, is to build trust by sharing great content, even though it's not your content or your organization content, but if it's good, uh, it's, uh, I will be more likely to click on your links because I know that you're only sharing great stuff. And promote your journalists uh, on your uh, uh, main accounts. Promote the list of journalists. If I like a show, if I like a newspaper, I want to know who, uh, who the, the people behind it. So let me know them by creating lists or by giving, them, g giving me their username. And, um, and then live tweet. So the live tweet is the most important part for a journalist. It is the easiest way to gain followers. So how can you do that? This is Willy Ledevin, he's a journalist from Liberation, it's a print newspaper, mainly in France. He has 500 followers early, uh, late, um, uh, late July, last year. So, small account from a journalist from the, a print, from the print. He's not on TV, he's not well known. And he will, he's doing his job. There is a, a, a public rally uh, in support of Palestine in July in Paris. The rally is forbidden, but it happens nonetheless is on the field to cover it for his newspaper. So he starts to live tweet. And uh, he basically tweets 100, um, 100 tweets during the afternoon about things he have seen, things he have heard, uh, impressions, reflection, etc., etc. 100 tweets in seven hours. Basically, I'm living, we are living the rally through his eyes and through his, uh, uh, expert eyes. These tweets are embedded on its, its website. So you, ca you know how to embed the tweet, you click on the plus button, you get the code, and you put the code in your uh, CMS. And like this. His own journal um, uh, asks all the followers to follow him to get the news about this event. So he becomes a source of information for his own newsroom. And during his live tweeting, he uh, encounter like uh, very dramatic images. He snapped pictures like this, and he get impressive engagement, almost uh, 1,400 retweets for this picture. And this picture is used by 17 newsroom embedded because it's a great picture and he's a journalist, so he is to be trusted. So he became the source not only for a newspaper, his newspaper, but also for several. Um, French and international um, uh, outlets. And this tweet was retweeted uh, almost uh, so 1,400 times and was seen half a billion times, uh, half a million times outside of Twitter. So this is a great testament to the public dimension and well distributed dimension of, of Twitter. At the end, when he uh, later this uh, day, he published his article with a link, he got impressive engagement just for a tweet with a link. Uh, and when we read this article, he explained why he did his live tweet. And basically what he's saying is he did it for his readers on his newspaper. He didn't thought about gaining followers or etc. He wanted to uh, provide real-time information for his newspaper. And when you look at his uh, follower, so he started at 500, and 48 hours after the rally, he uh, multiplied by five times. And when you see the chart, it's like this, just because he live tweeted. Because people just didn't know he existed. I, they didn't know he was a journalist. But they, I, they discovered him thanks to his work. He was just doing his work. He was on the street, just telling to the world what he was say, uh, uh, seeing. And when you do a, uh, a search with the search operator Olivia talked about uh, during this period of time, and when you put just his username, you can see that people are thanking him for doing his work. So people on Twitter thanking a journalist. So it doesn't happen every day. And just because they wanted to share their emotion and their gratitude because uh, he embedded them inside the news uh, thanks to his live tweeting. And we have even someone who is telling, I will buy the newspaper in two, in two days. 
because uh, I'm so grateful that uh, about your live tweeting. This li kind of li live tweet, you can do it for um, uh, uh, a, conf a conference from Apple, you can do it for dramatic events, you can do it uh, for uh, a trial, you can do it uh, if you have someone famous in your, new in your newsroom, you can do it for uh, s some kind of ceremony. Basically, bring your audience in places where they are not allowed. When you do that, because you are a journalist, you have access, you give them access, and they follow you. Just as simple as that. Uh, just skip it, skip, skip this one, and... But it's good to do fast. Yeah, you want to do it? So now that we have learned how to you know, search for content, how do we distribute it in the right way? How do we uh, uh, improve our tweets? And how do we enrich our website with curated content coming from Twitter? So about highlighting our account, we want to make sure that everybody knows that we are on Twitter. So we can put it in the signature of our emails. Uh, we can make sure that it's on the web, under the article or above the article published on the website by uh, asking the team, the de developers, to add a little Twitter, bo Twitter button that encourages people to follow you. Or uh, and you can, yes, use it kind of as a signature for, for your articles. You can put it on paper as well. So even people who are not digital, let's say they know that they can reach out to you just in case. They can make comments about their article by tweeting at you. And also, if you work on TV, you can ask people to, uh, to show the, t the team, the producers, to show your Twitter account on screen so that people can interact with you in real time. But how do we improve our teams, uh, our tweets? Uh, at ProPublica, the famous website, um, they have uh, every journalist that sends an article has to submit also five ways to tweet it. So it's really, it really shows you how important it is for them to tweet it in the right way. So um, that you have to think that whenever you publish an article on Twitter, you have to make something that is shareable, it's short, and it's uh, really engaging. It shows emotions, triggers emotions in people, and possibly use some data and some numbers to attract attention. And uh, of course, if you are interviewing, if you interview someone famous, mention this person in the tweet because also the people who follow you and this person will see the mention, and also this the person, of course, who might be interested in retweeting it. So how to grab the attention? Uh, using images is really important. Take screenshots of your article. Um, try to tweet the link multiple times with different angles. So if a, if a, if a tweet you see didn't work very well with that those 140 characters, try new ones, absolutely. This works, as you can see in this situation. Uh, reshare, if you, you, you can republish the same article during the day and showing that it's a reshare by adding an hashtag like rediff, which means rediffusion in French, for, exa for example. And when, you have, when there is something in the news that is very big, like uh, an article, uh, uh, sorry, an actor winning a, a prize, an award, you can take something back from your archive and tweet it again so that it becomes very relevant to those who are following the event. In general, this is the percentage of engagement around tweets with photos, quotes, and numbers. So this really proves that you have to make your tweet as multimedia as possible. Uh, this is an example of showing numbers in tweets, really uh, attractive uh, to people who are into numbers. Um, in this case, you can also use emoticons because they, they work very well. There are no examples here, but they're very good. Report the words you heard in a studio. If you are uh, doing an interview and somebody says something that could be relevant, report it. In this case, this is very interesting. Uh, the, the person who, uh, who reported a quote added a picture, and the, pi the, the, the same tweet, but with a picture, got much more engagement than the one without a picture. So really, make your tweet multimedia friendly. Another great example of a quote with a picture. So two things in one, even better, I have to say. And uh, this is, we can skip it. But in general, if you are somewhere where you are showing, being shown material that is really interesting to, to, to show to other people because it's only available to you, share it with people because it's, uh, it's a great way. Twitter, people who are on Twitter, they expect to see things that are original and never seen before. Tease people, you have an interview coming up, tease people about it, ask people to send you questions about it, and then you can re then rely to the person you are interviewing. Uh, also, share the making of. So you are preparing for an article, for an interview, share the preparation of this event with your followers. 
And also your daily routine in the office, if you're working, if you're writing an article, share the articles you're reading in order to prepare for an interview. That's really useful. And when you have multimedia, in this case pictures, you can tag people so that people know that they are, are appearing in one of your pictures. Uh, when you Basically, it's really simple. You upload the picture onto the application. You can click on who's in this photo, and you can tag people so they, are, they know that they are, uh, they are appearing in your picture. And uh, they will be, you can tag them here, basically. You can add whomever you want. Let's go back again. And people who are being tagged, they will receive a notification, so they know that we, they will be appearing. You can upload up to four photos in each tweet. Very uh, convenient feature, because it doesn't uh, eat all your characters. And you can come up with something very cool, that looks very cool. You can shoot three 30, uh, sorry, three 30 second videos within the app. How, do, how can you do that? When you uh, click on the composer, you click on the icon of the camera, and then you will see that there is another icon there. It's the video camera. You click on it, and you access to this, uh, have access to this tool. Basically, how does it work? You tap the, the button. When the button is tapped, it records a video. When you leave it, it doesn't record. So you can record different segments, like four seconds, five seconds. You can rearrange them and do like a live editing of the, of the video up to 30 seconds. And when it's done, it, uh, it attaches automatically to your tweet, and you can tweet it like a native video, and people will see it in the timeline. So it would be much more engaging than a tweet with a YouTube link, for example, because in that case, you have to click two times to see the video. In this, in this case, you only click once. That's an example of a video, but we uh, don't have time to see it. You want to skip to the um, engage part directly? OK, because this one we already did it before, basically. It's uh, about connection. You want to do it? Yeah. So uh, use the conversational uh, dimension of Twitter for starting a conversation, getting a deal, or seeking information. So start a conversation. Here's a, a rule, um, not well known, but very important. If you begin a tweet with an hour, an hour base, uh, only a subset of your followers will see this tweet. Because Twitter acknowledges the tweet as a conversation. So if you want your tweet to be sent to your, all your followers, he has to begin with other thing, another thing than uh, 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 the arrobas. So you can tweet, uh, if you tweet uh, at Livia Colare is the best, only you and the, your followers that also follows Livia will so, uh, see the tweet in their timelines. Instead, if you tweet a dot at Livia Colare is the best, then it's normal, all your followers will see it. So. Just start with other things that than the arrow base. You can put an asterisk, you can put an exclamation mark, you can put everything you want. The um, tradition is the point because uh, it's it's less uh, it's more discreet. But as far as you don't begin with an arrow base, you're fine. You can also leverage criticism. You can uh, respond to the to the critics you are getting. You can even shoot a video where you respond in uh, by oral to to the critics, like this guy uh, did in the in Canada, uh, and then use the conversational to get to to have an agreement. So this user tweets uh, a picture about uh, ice in um, in Nice, and Metro News want to use not the tweet but the picture. And they ask the permission to the user, and they ask it nicely. Uh, Hello, can we use your nice photo? And she said, yes, no problem. So you get permission. Uh, this user, uh, American user, uh, uh, just arrived in Paris in the Roissy airport. Uh, she takes an Uber uh, right in the middle of, in the middle of, of um, a strike, uh, and the taxis were on strike. They attacked the Uber. She tweets about it. The media report the news about the taxi strike and embeds her story in the in the news. Twenty minutes after that, she explained that a uh, driver uh, managed to get her safely uh, at home. And twenty minutes after that, we have uh, a journalist from Le Monde uh, who is connecting with them and asking them asking her about her phone because she wa he wants to do an interview about uh, with her. And so what's happening? She she probably has uh, clicked on uh, on his on his profile, she sees that he's a journalist, he's a verified journalist, so she has faith in him, and she says, okay, uh, send me a DM, I'll give you my personal contacts. So this is a great way to grab a source. Uh, 
because he has maintained a great Twitter presence. He's a journalist. Uh, sh when you go to his profile, you see that he is indeed a journalist, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, having a Twitter presence helps you unlock this kind of of things. Uh, then you can ask your follower uh, questions. Uh, some of them will be really intelligent, so leverage the fact that you are followed by intelligent people and, and ask them questions, and you'd get answers. Uh, and seek information. Uh, get also questions. So you, maybe you have to prepare for an interview, or, or you have a paper, or anything. Ask them questions. Ask them, what would you ask to this person? And uh, using an hashtag, they will send you that question. Maybe you will use, it, use them, maybe not, but at least you have material. Uh, same here, so let's keep. Uh, and you can also do Q&As, so basically make yourself available uh, if you are the center of an event or uh, and ask people to send you questions and you answer on your Twitter account. Okay, nice. So yeah. this would be maybe the, the last one just to give, um, yeah. give them some uh, yeah. news about. Okay. Uh, one thing we wanted to point you to are the resources that you can use um, for news. Let me go back because uh, there is uh, another big event coming up. We don't want to, uh, you know, take some time. Go to this website, media.twitter.com slash news. You will find the best case studies about news. Very interesting for you guys. Another thing we suggest you, follow at Twitter for news. It, it, it's an account that highlights the best usages of Twitter for news in the world. So all the best case studies for you. And also follow TweetDeck because it's a great account to follow and it will update you on the new features that are being released uh, time after time. And uh, one more thing, Periscope, but uh, we will do a Periscope later afterwards and we will be able to uh, explain it to you in real time. So if after this you want to follow us outside, we will do a live test of Periscope just to show you. And we have to, I think we have to close it right now because yeah, we are out of time because there is another event coming up. We tried to shrink everything in one hour, so we hope we didn't, you know, uh, <laughs> to say too much, but we are available for questions outside. So make yourself heard. And thank you very much for coming. Bye-bye. <laughs>